All right. Uh, so let's get started. I wanted to take a look at a couple of stuff, a couple of things today. So I want to take a look at this if I have time. I do have another piece that was supposed to be here from last time, sent by Lava. Um, there it is. Open original. Okay. And then I have a 14 day challenger I wanted to take a look at. Um, just talk about rotation and um, using Portrait Studio. And I have a little color correction to do here. Um, but I want to start off with some basic announcements. It's day 14, um, like halfway into the month. Uh, so if you are interested in joining uh, Patreon for the apprentice tier assignments, you may get into the Discord. Uh, you will get an invite sent to you. It's not ro it's, I'm not using the Discord uh, robot for Patreon because that thing is glitchy and it invited everybody. Um, uh, so I, I send out invites manually. If you want to be a part of the d d Discord and you join Patreon, you can just message me um, on, ma on Patreon and I'll get the email right away and I'll send you the Discord invite. But you may not have time to complete the assignment. The assignment is due in three weeks. The, 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 the critique day um, for Patreon will be the 5th of next month. Um, so it'll be, you have one, two, three weeks from now. They've already had like almost four weeks. I've already sent out the assignments probably on Sunday or Monday, I forget. Um, I sent out the assignment. Um, so the assignment is a challenge, it's a design challenge, and if you want to be a part of that, you do have some time left, not so much time considering that you might have to blueprint and do all the homework. So if you do join Patreon and then join the apprentice tier, uh, you, you're free to uh, participate in previous challenges. If there's time, I always go in and take a look at them. Um, the previous challenges are all set up so that they build up towards the current challenge running right now. Um, but yeah, but if anyone's interested in joining Patreon and supporting what I do, uh, you have many tiers to choose from. Um, and uh, one of them is just a basic watcher tier. If you want to be a watcher, if you want to support for just like a dollar, I am aiming for a thousand patrons. So if anyone is interested in supporting, um, don't know how, Patreon is a wonderful way. But all the other tiers are educational, um, leading all the way up to Apprentice, where you get the most educational material, including my brushes, Discord uh, uh, access, and lessons, private streams, all of that business. Um, and uh, that's it. Um, so uh, I haven't read any of the comments here. Um, I will soon. I'm not sure if it was just the one comment, but um, the challenge will be up soon. I've decided on what the challenge is going to be. I might post it as a poll, probably within the next two weeks. I might post it as a poll. I've taken, I've taken a look at all your suggestions and all of that. Um, and uh, I think our next challenge is going to be really, really fun. And uh, that's it. Those are enough announcements for today. And if you want to join the, this this uh, critique hour, you want to submit your work, you just have to go to isterac.com and join the Google Plus um, community that we have on the top right. I'll show it again at the end of class. Um, so I'm going to start off with the this 14-day challenger here, who is a graduate of the, th the three-quarter view 14-day challenge. Actually, more than a graduate, they did a 15 days. Um, so this was their day one three-quarter view. And this is their day 15. So they improved a lot with respect to beauty. Um, they, re they improved a lot with familiarity, anatomy. It actually looks like a person here that I know. Um, the blending is much better. The light environment is much more tame. And um, the placement of the eyebrows. There's no accidental expression. There's no droopy anatomy in the eyes. Everything seems really well done. There are some things that are holding it back, though. So this is Portrait Studio. If you don't know what it is, it's the pro software when I developed. Um, and it is for reference generation. So I'm just going to use the basic model here to rotate and just take a look at what happens on one very, very important aspect of the three-quarter view, which is the eyelid space right over here. So I'm just going to get rid of the shadow so you can see that. So you can control everything, lighting, shadows, all of that. And I'm pressing Alt and left click to move the model and just take a look at what happens to the far eye. So just keep your eye on one spot and rotate. That's kind of how you study rotation. Keep your eye on one spot. 
Don't try to take it all as a whole because what will happen is that it, you will get overwhelmed and you will miss out on the nuances. Three quarter view is complicated because what it is is a, an absolute test on your knowledge with every anatomical component on the face, which is a heavy, heavy duty test. Um, it tests your ability to rotate and hide stuff behind the nose. It tests your ability to find the geometric anatomy of the lips. It tests your ability to move the anatomy of the eyes symmetrically in three-quarter view so they still look like they're the same eyes either side. Um, it tests your ability to know where the neck and the chin is um, and the forehead and the shape of the head and whether or not you remember that it's square type dome at the top. Um, so a lot goes into three-quarter view which is why it's so difficult. So I love seeing challengers take on the three-quarter view 14-day uh, challenge. I really love seeing that. Um, there are some adjustments ideally that I would love and I think we will be replacing a lot of these models. To my taste they kind of don't meet up. I'm very very picky um, and I'll probably be bringing in a lot of my sculpts soon but, um, but I'm just going to be rotating the head and I'm just taking a look at one aspect at a time. So the one aspect I'm looking at the most is this little eyelid. At no point does the eyelid sink down. Um, the eyelid would sink down like that if the eyes were droopy or old. So what you've done here is you've accidentally expressed it as a droopy eye. The thickest and deepest part of the eye socket is right here where the ball of the eye is. And it doesn't feel like your, your eye is a ball. It feels like it's a flat shape. One thing that does hide is the distant part of the lid, the very far part. So I'm taking this whole eye and I'm shifting it over so we see more of one aspect of the eyelid than the other. One face, one angle of it. Just like that. Okay, so we've rotated the eye. We see more of one side of whatever attachment is on the eyeball, which in this case is the eyelid. Okay? So rotate one aspect at a time when studying rotation. You miss the light spot here on the lower eyelid just there. Another thing that happens when we rotate an eye, again, is we see that spherical dome. We start seeing that dome shape. Oops. So see how things are showing off? See how we see the sphere, the dome of the ball, the little belly of the ball starts showing through. Um, so again, what we're doing here is trying to show off more of a, a dome and I'm squishing the shape of the pupils which you had but I'm just trying to tuck everything behind the inner corner you showed so much of the inner corner but the inner corner gets tucked away eventually hides you showed as much of the inner corner as you would for a front view eye why would you show so much of this corner if it's starting to hide behind the belly of the eye that is starting to get revealed in the three quarter view rotation it's a mouthful, but that's the point. So I'm trying to show that things start off just like that. So it's complicated because there's just so much that goes into it. Just like that. Okay. So just these changes, I'm going to show you the before and after. Very, very small little changes in the rotation but they have helped the eye look less like its front view and more like its side view. Jesus. <clears throat> okay, so before. After. Before. After. See how the eye is more rotated to the far side? Because we've hidden the far side. Now it seems very self-explanatory now that you look at it. But it is one of the things that a lot of artists miss out on. And that's why their three-quarter views don't look very successful. Then there is the kind of the style of hooded eye that you added here. You made it so that the hooded eye feels like it's doing this. That is more of an old eye. A healthy hooded eye is more of a plump shape, more of a spherical shape. So that's why I'm adding a larger core shadow down here. So uh, many people want the glory of being environment artists or concept artists or they want to draw stuff that has nothing to do with just a basic face. They don't want to study. But I don't think they realize exactly how much goes into a face. A face is a wonderful environment to learn all the fundamental rules in. 
because everything happens on the face from creases to edges to changes in angle to to uh to, to acute and obtuse uh, angles in, in in surface areas to subsurface scattering to geometry and then to the organic um like kind of like pliable shapes okay the eyebrow is a little too low eyebrows don't just sit that low at least not ideally the nose is synced with the end of the eyebrow, so that means that if you rotate the head, the eyebrow starts sitting in front of the face because, again, take a look at the eyebrow. So we're moving the face back forward. The eyebrow is just in front, on top, very simply. But the more we rotate, the more the eyebrow extends in distance between, so line, line, this distance is longer. So line from the inner corner, line from here, and then we're moving it back. This this distance is now shorter because we the eyebrow bone is ahead and in front of the eyeball. So when it rotates, it looks even more in front because the rotation has revealed how much higher the eyebrow is from the eyeball. Um, uh, Abu? My, my portrait studio is not working. Okay, everything's frozen. Okay, I think my computer crashed. Uh, Abu, I, I need your help. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> my computer crashed. And I moved it so many times, I'm not sure how to reset it. Um, can you please help me? Fucking shit crashed. I'm not sure how. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, this is fine how it is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So what the fuck was I doing? Um, I was rotating the head. So again, look at the eyebrows. And look at how, as we rotate, look, oh, look, the eyebrow is much higher even than the cheeks. Look at how high it is. And that's why the eyebrow extends in distance. And look at how much higher. The eyebrow is all the way out here while the eyeball is inside the socket. Again, other stuff that you get when you rotate. So you don't need to learn how to be a modeler, really, in order to have access to this, kinds of, this kind of referencing. Portrait Studio is pretty much why we designed it, so that artists have more access to the 3D modeling world and the awesome resources that come with it for your visual library. So if you're interested in it, you can find it on my store. So I'm just extending this. The eyebrow catches a lot of light. I'm letting some of that light catch. So it's not just a saggy um, upper eyelid. It's more of a gradual buildup. And it's hooded. Yeah, it's still hooded. Now here's another trick, it's called radial shading. And what I'm doing here is I'm just casting value number one with really low opacity but high color feed. And I'm just gradually working along the edge of the crease. But I built a core shadow. My darkest value wasn't the line of the crease. My darkest value, and there was no darkest value. It all built up with the same value color. It's just layered up. Oh. Okay, so before, after. See how we have a crease now? Before, after. Okay. So um, it's a for sure that Portrait Studio will come out on Mac. It's um, well, it's a for sure that we have hold of a Mac now. We have hold of a Mac computer. Because you can't really export to a to the Apple Store without having a Mac of your own, so we are having we are getting one. So um, I'm not sure because Portrait Studio is done and done. All we need to do is export it to a Mac. But the problem is that Mac works very differently with GPUs and what what we've used in order to make Portrait Studio possible, especially with the enhanced lighting. We've used a lot of the Microsoft software, patented Microsoft software. So uh, that might put a wrench in the development, at least in the, uh, might delay the, the release, but it's definitely in the works for everyone who needs it. Okay. All 
All right, so I'm just sinking the other eyebrow now in. It does seem into the brow line, but not so much. It's not that much of a, of a stacking. <clears throat> yeah, so for those Mac users who have been very patient, um, we had a lot of trouble figuring out how we were gonna get access to a Mac and all that, but now it's all very possible. So see how I'm projecting the eyebrow shape above? And I'm giving some light here for the eyebrow shape. So it's not just like a saggy, like a cavity that looks like it's just sunken in, but it's actually building up into a high point. Same thing over here. We see more of one side than the other. But the problem here is that you've darkened it for some reason. Probably because you need outlining and all that. Darken the inner side for some reason. So all we got to do is just, uh, is just grab this and raise it up like we raised the other one. Okay, and I'm just flipping the canvas. Again, another requirement <laughs> is to flip your canvas. It's hard for you to assess a three-quarter view tilt or anything without flipping your canvas. So I'm just tucking th some things in. Again, this eye also feels like it's not looking forward. And don't show too much of the far side. You really need to tuck things in. And I need to bring in some more illumination here. And then completely just disappear that far side. And then just start hiding some stuff. Another problem in your three-quarter view is that the lips were not cylindrical. They weren't tucking. You need to see that C shape. Okay, Cupid's bow has to be level. And don't oversize the upper lip. Typically, the upper lip is always a little bit bigger than the lower lip, but it's not that much bigger. It's not swollen. A lot of you guys forget that there's a little, sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so burpy. There's a little dip here. All right, then there's the nostril. The septum is lower. The nostril is higher. And then three quarter row, we see more of the space of the nostril. Stop drawing like pencil hole nostrils because it's it doesn't make any sense. The nose needs to breathe. A large nostril doesn't mean a large nose. It just means a functional nose. Write that back to me. <clears throat> then there is the shape of the outer corner here that you kind of just uh, elongated a little. And then I'm just trying to make sure the eyes are symmetrical. Okay, flip. And I'm just going to give this some more space. This also needs that radial touch I added here. Yeah, you need a functional nostril. Write that back. Yes. I mean, large compared to what you guys are drawing. Not large, like large, large. <laughs> Okay, so darken. So any questions at all about, about any of, the, of these changes? So see how I'm radially bringing down the top there? So before, a little old feeling because of the sag, do you know what I mean? After the eyes rotated, looks less like it's looking forward and more like it's looking to the side. I'm actually not even sure if that's the complete before. Okay, and then the circular shape of the eye is gone. It becomes more of a triangular shape. Another really important thing is that you guys show way too much of the far side.
this whole little fraction right here is just it disappears okay so I'm gonna try to do it so that I uh, <coughs> Would less of the far eye be visible from this view? Oh, the whole far eye, the whole outer corner, the whole far corner is gone. It's hidden behind the belly of the ball. Okay, so you guys always show a bit too much. So if this person looked forward, their head would be wide. And then I just gotta shave off that chin. Okay. Um, any other questions at all? So this is a bit more of like a fundamentals kind of class to do with your quarter view. Um, so for this person, good job on you for, for, for t attempting this difficult perspective and not just that, but for 14 days straight. And I encourage others to just um, do this as well. It'll really help you address a lot of your mistakes and rotating a face prepares you for rotating a body, rotating a torso. Okay, a little bit of the other eyelid is visible. And then you've got the lashes and the lower lashes also all visible. And this little bit of the eye here. I'm just leaving behind some markers of where I would put in some blocks. Need a little bit there. A cast shadow of a nose. Take a look at what happens to the nose. Um, a cast shadow of a nose. If it's going to be that long, look at the eyebrows. Look at how long your cast shadow is for your nose, but there's no eyebrow cast shadow. So if you're going to go for a shadow that nearly touches the cupid's bow, like right over here, we need to be seeing some shadows on the eyebrows. So if you don't want shadows on the eyebrows, your nose shadow should be halfway through or less than halfway. So what you have over here is very, very wrong. The nose shadow is not a cop-out to filling in the area just because you're scared of doing a cupid's bow or something like that. Cupid's bow is simple. Two dark lines, whatever, you can cheat your way into it. But you can't mess around with a cast shadow length like that. Also, the cast shadow is too dark. Before, after. So just basic blocks, I'll leave that cleaning up to you. Okay, and I'm just, uh, Cleaning up. The eyes don't look like they're looking in the same direction anymore. So this is probably something I should talk about. Um, it really doesn't, you don't need to cross eyes to make them look like they're in the same, looking in the same direction. You just have to make sure they're symmetrical. It's not like front view where we cross them because they don't cross from the, from the three quarter view perspective. You just have to make them level, symmetrical. Okay, so that's it. I would adjust the eyebrow. It looks like it's a bit of a front-facing eyebrow. Three-quarter view eyebrow does a little bit more movement that way and ends off pretty quickly like that, sort of facing forward. And all these little things add up. They all add up. See how flat the face was? It was facing forward completely. See the lips? How the lips were looking forward? Do you guys see that shit? Don't do this anymore. Look at the nostril, how tiny it was. Okay? And I would hide even more of the face. I would hide even more of the distant part of the head. The quarter view is about showing less. Do less work and just leave behind some cylindrical spheres. That's it. Write that back. Three quarter view is about doing less work, showing less. Okay. 
Okay, so before, after, and then this is the very first one that they did. All right. So I recommend all these changes. These changes do represent a higher skill level. What they don't mean that you have to be a whole new person. It's just the small little changes added together that add up, you know, that, that make a big difference because it's you're seeing the changes in everything else. And sculpting. I recommend sculpting. For those who can't be asked with sculpting, um, try try Portrait Studio. But for those who can sculpt, I mean, you have sculpting as a resource. And I always, in, part, in private tutoring, in my classes, I always assign students sculpting. I always tell them to sculpt. Um, always get some clay, get some ZBrush, you know, pick up some ZBrush at the store and sculpt. Because sculpting provides you with that uh, like an endless amount of visual library reinforcement of the frames, not just the key frames, but the in-between frames of a rotation. Because rotation means suddenly things have moved, they've shifted. Um, things have uh, mobilized. They are now revealing the volumes. The z-axis comes into play and things have, have gone into motion. So. You know, be careful with that. You can't just, you can't learn how to rotate based off a, you know, very measly little um, uh, front view reference that you copied or multiple front view references. It's not enough of a resource for your brain to get what it needs in order to give you what you need when you're rendering later. Okay? Um, all right, so uh, I want to try doing the quarter view soon, but the side of the face and shadow confuses me a lot. That really large shadow on the side. The Kira, make sure you're rotating the head, but it's got a three. It, there's no. It's a three quarter head, not a three quarter view lighting. Make sure the lighting is still top down symmetrical. Don't rotate the head and change the lighting. <clears throat> <laughs> Less torque. Hey, Levi. <clears throat> Animators would sculpt small, uh, small clay maquettes of their characters so they could rotate them in drawings convincingly. Awesome, Jen. <clears throat> if you want to have a crack at digital sculpting, Blender is free and has some powerful sculpting tools. There you go. Okay, so moving on. This one I've, I was going to look at last time. It's a great gesture. I'm not really sure what you're doing with it, though. Is she supposed to be, like, sitting like Tinkerbell? Like the way Tinkerbell would sit on, like, a thimble and kind of just flirtatiously chill? If that's the case, then you need more of a pinup style arc to the back. You also have an extremely masculine body. And you're trying to force us to see the silhouette of the neck the way we would see it against the shoulders from top view. You know how you see shoulders and it kind of bumps up like that? You, you we don't see that. We're looking at her from top down. The colors are beautiful. Everything is great. The head is a little bit long face syndrome. Okay, so I corrected that. But the biggest problem was the chest because you made the chest masculine by projecting it out like pecs. This is all squish. This is all jelly right here. The thing you would see the most is the rib cage at this point, and the stomach just sinks in after that. Careful with any masculine signatures here and there. And then the butterfly is not contoured along the body. One, one half of the butterfly should be smaller and one should be bigger. And if you want her to have a flirtatious kind of shoulder, shoulder, just bring it up closer. Start the shoulder a little bit early. Don't go and give us a full front view silhouette of the shoulder because then it just looks like something just bitter. As for the, um, the feet, they really don't have anything feminine going on, so I recommend more of a pointed toe. This foot has no definition in it at all. There was no heel or anything. So I gave it a bit more of a feminine touch. This leg feels very, very long. You might be looking at your reference through a bad perspective. 
Make sure you're reading your reference right. Make sure you remember the body type of the reference compared to the body type you're going for. It seems like you're going for something a bit more delicate. Again, I'm not sure what she's doing with her hands. She has to be doing something with her hands. It can't just be like that. She kind of looks worried and sick, kind of worried sick. So I'm just going to lower that little indentation you have around the eyebrows. So before, after. Do you see the problem with the chest, how masculine it looked? It was big, bigger than the head. Do you see the long face? And that little worry in her eyebrows, that slight little worry, you know, that little shit that I pay my rent this month kind of thing. Or crap, I don't have rent money. <laughs> I'm just going to get rid of the eyebrow completely. Before, you know, <laughs> after. A little bit more feminine. Um, then you have the shadow of the nose right here, which is flat. should have a bit more of a, like a, a circular top to it, just something like that. If you don't like that, then start it a little bit later. <laughs> Leave it just at the tip, okay? Your quarter view is about showing less. Core view is about showing less. <laughs> Core view. It's three quarter view. Three quarter view. <clears throat> the colors are very beautiful. The colors are wonderful. Um, so the thing is with her hands, what I recommend you do is something a little bit more feminine. So she seems like she's sliding off some sort of surface, which would make sense if there was a surface, but there's no surface. So you can't have an important prop that explains a lot of the anatomy just there doing nothing. Um, uh, so it's okay, John. Um, so what you have to do is find another, you know, gesture to have with the hands just like anything, you know, anything for the hands, just anything so that this hand doesn't feel so awkward. All right, so I used to do a lot of like arm adjustment, really, really crazy stuff back then, so I'm gonna try to do it now. So I drew my little gesture. I'm gonna bend the arm a little bit. Turn off my guiding lines. Go over here. Okay, so another weird thing that you did, I'm not sure what it is. Is it her tail? I don't know what it is, but you've interrupted her silhouette by putting, putting in this big block of I don't know what. It doesn't look important at all. It, I don't even know what it is. Is it part of the, the wings? If it is, then, then make it less important because right now what you've done is interrupted a very important vital part of her read and her, in her, this is a pinup and you've destroyed the curve in her body. So <laughs> it's like, it's like having a, it's, it's like you, you, you just did the wrong thing. <laughs> you did the wrong thing, um, with the, with the theme, you, 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 you muted the carrier of the theme, which is her waistline, period. Don't do that next time. Okay, and then we have a bit more of a delicate hand, and I'm just gonna grab this hand and just kind of figure it out over there as well. Don't try this at home. The hands are a bit more flirty, kind of just floating, chilling out, you know, they're not doing anything specific. 
<laughs> Mr. Brack, in-depth critique. You did a wrong thing. Don't do that next time. <laughs> and then you have more of like a, you know, like a, a hand. I'm not sure what the hand would be doing. I'm just going to make it just manly and massive. <laughs> no, 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 I'm going to shrink it. No, no, no. And then, um, just whatever. I, I don't fuck. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, the other arm might actually need to be a little bit shorter than that. Okay, so for the fact that it's a pinup, um, I think you should, well, first of all, this foot is completely attracting our attention away from the focal point, so just dim that out a little bit, please. Um, there's also what she's doing, when she's looking in this direction, she's falling in this direction, this whole half of the canvas is just doing nothing. So I recommend that she looks over this way. Okay? So that she's looking in this direction. At least her eyesight is filling this half of the canvas up. Okay? And then there's the fact that, you know, just the whole body, the, everything about it is just... So it feels like she, you know, because I have a back problem, so I just look at her and my back hurts. It feels like she should be doing something a little bit more like this. Her shoulders should be a little bit lower. Her head should be a bit more out. It's just, a, it's not really the best gesture for a model to take. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Um, To separate the head and then move into this and adjust it. Because the, the, there was just too much distance. And then bring the head back. <coughs> And just kind of try to get the neck to be a little bit more present there. Okay, so it's a lot of adjustments, but um, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so correcting that really feels like we'd see some of the, I don't know, maybe it's the start of this cast shadow here. Yeah, it is. Hmm. I'm just, um, I pointed to the issue. I don't have time to correct it and think about it the whole time. I think most of the changes I made have already changed the painting quite a bit. So I'm going to let you just see the difference. See that? See the shoulders? I want to make sure you see that. Because that needs to be um, adjusted. All right. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, so before, kind of like yes, sticking out her body, <laughs> and then uh, after a little bit more relaxed. Um, all right. So <laughs> sorry about the noise. It's just 
<laughs> it's the noise that I kind of have in my mind when I see um, <laughs> like a change in the bodies before and after. Um, all right, so I hope this was helpful. I'm going to call it a day. I don't have time to look at either of these. I might leave these for next time, though. I've been doing a lot of that, so don't fret. Um, just to keep it all focused on rotation and stuff instead of just jumping around between light, because this is light and color, and this is light and color. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining. If you guys want to join uh, the class, you just have to go to istabrak.com and click on the little Google Plus icon to join. A challenge will be available very, very soon, or a challenge poll at least. Um, and uh, make sure you upload to the right uh, category. Thank you, Mods, for keeping this community going. We're hitting um, 8,000 members, and uh, you know, and, and everything's still very functional, and, and this community is very active. Um, so thank you, everyone, for following the rules as well. Um, but yeah, post to the right categories. And uh, Patreon, if anyone's interested in Patreon, you can support as a watcher or an apprentice, and you can you still have some time to do the lessons from this month. And uh, I just want to apologize for how tired I've been, how tired I'm going to probably stay indefinitely this summer. Uh, just a lot of hiking, a lot of camping, um, hopefully some camping soon, and um, just a lot of outdoors stuff that is trying to change my life for the better. And um, I spent like 2017 in utter complete pain. I don't want to say no now to any opportunity to go outside and have a bonfire. I've been very, very happy in that I can, um, you know, just see more of Mother Nature and, and fill up my visual library some more. I invite a lot of you to do that. I actually posted a small little journal about it on the community page. I hope you guys are okay with that. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining today. I will see you guys on Tuesday the 19th. Bye everyone. Oh, and I might go to Canada next week. I'm not sure which day because I have to go pick up that MacBook. Um, so I don't know what day that's going to be, but it's going to be sometime next week. It'll probably be a morning trip, but that's about six, seven hours of driving altogether. So I might not have any energy to do any private or public classes. So I'm letting you guys know that one of these in the coming days, I may, I mean, I'm saying I'll see you guys on the 19th, but I might not. So I'm just, hopefully I'll see you guys on the 19th. If not, one of these days I'm going to be canceling public class maybe. All right. Bye everyone.